Well, changing tunes now to the world of basketball and the young lady who is considered the next big thing in world basketball, Liz Cambridge. Thank you very much for coming in here Welcome. tonight. You're being touted as the number one or number two pick in the WNBA draft. That must be an incredible thing to be spoken about. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty exciting, but you know, there's a lot of hype about Maya Moore. It's my competition at the moment to go number one or number two. So just time, time we'll see in the next month. Do you, obviously everyone will want to go number one, but the, the two teams are uh, Oklahoma and is it Minnesota? Um, Minnesota and Tulsa, which is in Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. so w do you have a preference over which, which place you end up in, no yeah, matter Minnesota. which way it goes? Minnesota, definitely. Well, your career has been meteoric, your rise, and also your height, without being too rude, because no lady likes <laughs> to talk about uh, her height, but you're six foot eight, is yeah. that right? Mm -hmm. Tell us about how quickly you grew as a youngster. Oh, uh, I, I never really noticed it growing up. I guess, you know, I was always taller than everyone else, but yeah, I've never, it's never really phased me that much until I was at the Stanley Institute of Sport and everyone was just like tall, tall, tall. And then, yeah, that's when I really started feeling tall, I guess. And I'm reading that you were 182 centimetres when you were 10 years old. So I, was, I don't think that's right. It sounds really wrong. Like they said it the <laughs> other day when I was on another TV show, but I don't think that's right. <laughs> there you go. Well, your, your height obviously is a huge advantage because you can dunk the ball, which is mm -hmm. something most women can't do. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, I can dunk it and it's it's not even that like it's not even a good dunk so it's pretty once I start working on my hops and stuff hopefully it'll be like 360 spins and really fancy stuff. Do you watch much of the NBA who are you who are the guys that you model yourself on or is it more the women in the WNBA because you have some really good role models from yeah. Australia obviously Lauren Jackson's a big one. Yeah I'm Lauren Jackson and of course Penny Taylor they've I both looked at them they've done so much for the women's games but I love Kobe like if there was a player I'd be Kobe he just handles all the pressure and he gets so much hate for how great he is and it's he's just such a great player. You had a, a great experience being part of the Opals at the World Championships at just 19 and you really dominated there. Do you feel like that was a, a breakout tournament for you? Yeah, it was, it was a big breakout for me as well and um, it was a really good experience as well, learning and, you know, we did really badly there and you take that experience away as well. But, yeah, it was, it was good and bad at the same time. What kind of talks are you in with the people over in the States? I understand you're having coaches coming and looking at you all mm -hmm. the time here mm -hmm. in Melbourne. That must be pretty nerve-wracking. Yeah, I'm lucky because I've got um, really good support from my mum and my agent, Alison, so they all handle all that. So I don't, I have no idea what's going on. People ask me, what's the go with this? I'm like, I don't know. I'm just all my people. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and the idea of going over to the States to live the draft is on the 11th of April, so yeah. it's really soon and it could all happen yeah. really quickly for we, you. Um, we've booked our flights and Mum's turning it all into a holiday for her, so that's good, but I'm really excited. I just want the draft to be over and done with so I know where I'm going and I know where I'm going to be living for five months. Olympics, are they the biggest thing for you? And mm -hmm. the talent that's in Australian women's basketball should say that perhaps a gold medal is a talent in London in 2012? Yeah, um, it's, London's a big goal of mine, you know. We, uh, we learned so much from world champs last year and we're ready to get that gold medal, I think. You were born in London? Tell yes. us how you came to live in Australia. Ah, well, my dad, my dad lives in London and he's based there, so that's where mum had me over there and then she, they broke up, so mum moved back over to Australia and yeah, I'm Australian, I have nothing to do with them. They won't give me a European passport, so what's the point of saying I was born there? <laughs> and a really big game this weekend. You're playing in the grand final of the WNBL. You're expected to win the MVP award. Obviously, there's the MVP mm -hmm. in the grand final as well. That yeah. would be another a, a notch, I suppose, to, to make. Do you mm -hmm. think you can win this? It's a big game against Canberra. I just want that championship. I don't care about MVP. I don't care about all those awards. I just want a championship. That's all. Last year was just heartbreaking and I don't want to feel that ever again. <laughs> well, Liz, thank you very much for joining us. We're certainly going to watch your career with great interest and, and hopefully you do go number one. That would be a really special effort and we look forward to that and maybe big things in London next year. Thank you. Thank you for joining us.